All right, when I got to the lake, I noticed it was very low, and I had made some quick draw maps. Well, I noticed that my depth where I was sitting definitely did not match my quick draw contours. So I went in there, and I'm going to change the depth uh, readings, and uh, it'll calibrate it to what the actual depth is. Um, and you just go into quick draw contours, go into your settings right there. And what we're doing here, and I messed up, I'm not going to do it. I added three feet instead of taking it three feet away, but I will show you how it changes. Now, do you see it change from red to orange? Orange is my five to 10 foot depth zone. And I still notice I'm like, whoa, that's way wrong, but it's easily changeable. You notice I'm only in 0.9 feet right here. Normally I would be in about four foot of water. So I'm going to go back into the quick draw contours, go into settings right here, and then you go into user display offset now the user display offset offsets the map to match up with what you're doing so what i did is i went back and i took three feet off now notice everything is real red and the areas that are white that are spots in the lake that i have recorded that are now dry and you'll notice that right now it says i'm sitting in about one foot of water according to the map the uh the display lines or the contour lines and it also says i'm sitting in about one foot of water also on my actual depth reading so this is a very very handy tool to have when making quick draw contour maps <laughs> I love it. There it is. Oh man. The GG custom swim bait. Oh yeah. Beautiful fish. Let's let it go. And we're gonna talk about a few things here. Uh the GG custom swim bait. That's number one. Um, but we're using a beast, the big uh, owner beast hook with a treble hook. That one actually caught on the big hook at the top, so he hit it well. You come off a stump there, it actually will be able to see that on live scope. I, well, I'm hoping. I really wasn't looking at the live scope at the time. I was concentrating on the bait. So that tells you right there. I don't always look at the live scope. Um, but I've got the bait pop on there. This is the sexy shad color that I make with a pearl bottom. Uh, a, a chartreuse bloodline in a pearl smoke back and uh, we had been fishing 15 minutes and we done caught a nice one so let's go as my little boy would say let's go all right yeah so we just caught a fish with a uh, with one of the six inch hand pour swim baits now what I want to do is I'm going to go through the process that I use, and there are so many different processes. World's Worst Fishing is one of the best, um, but we're gonna go through the process of how I uh, pour my six inch uh, hand pour swim baits. Now, one of the things that I've done is I've figured out a trick to put a shad dot on. I see a lot of people try to pour a shad dot. Me, I tried it, man, I would make these globs of stuff, but I found like a, uh, 
like a uh, you know ear medicine dropper type deal, and you just suck up a little black, and you can put the perfect shad dots on uh, your baits. But the first thing you do before you do any of that is you need to warm up the mold. So what I do is I keep a lot of the old uh, hockey pucks of plastic laying around, and I will pour one or two swim baits to heat that mold up and get it warmed up to the temperature. So let's go. Let's take a look at this. This is really fun. Uh, I have a good time doing it. So um, I hope you enjoy. And this is also what I call the fish in the, uh, in the video. So the one thing about it was when you go big fishing, sometimes you don't get a lot of bites and uh, they just weren't uh, on the water was down real low. I really thought I'd do well, but it didn't work out that way. But guys, let's go. All right. The first step to um, making a shad dot is knowing where you like to put it. Now on each of these right here, there is a, a gill plate. And what I like to do is put the dot straight on the gill plate. Now, one of the techniques that I have learned is taking an old medicine dropper and taking the plastic. And this is some, some old black plastic that I have made up for frogs and things like that. And get that real hot. Let's see how hot that is. Let's see how hot it is. That is... 340 degrees, perfect temperature. Now I take it and I squeeze it down in there. Now suck me up some plastic. Got that one. And I got that one. So, we'll set that aside because I have spilled some, but if you'll take a look, now we have our shad dot in place. Uh, we let it cool for just a few seconds. It, it won't come off, be, you know, just be easy. And you'll go ahead, close your mold. And uh, one thing about angling AI molds that I like is you don't have to use clamps. They come with uh, screws in place. Now, now that we've got it, um, our, our shad dot poured, now we'll take our plastic, which we have already uh, warmed up right here. We'll check it. And if it's about 300 degrees or more, we'll go ahead and pour it. 300 degrees on the dot. Now, one thing that I will tell you about this that I have learned is you need a hot mold. And that's what this is. This is just some old plastic that I reuse over and over and over and over. Um, I'll just pour me some and then I'll put it back in here and then I use this to heat the mold up. Now you can use a griddle. I haven't got a griddle yet, but you can use a griddle. Now the place that I think the best place to pour is in the, is right down there where the tech, the, the tail necks down and it will help fill in evenly the whole mold. Uh, the tail will fill up and then everything will start running to the front because as it cools, the, uh, plastic will start uh, contracting. So nice, even pour the whole time. And when you pour it in there, it just, I mean, just looks absolutely gorgeous when it gets through. Sorry for the silence, but I'm in concentration mode. Man, it looks so bit beautiful. What this is, is they, this is just clear plastic. And I'll show you what I've added to it when I get through. It's uh, clear plastic, and then I, what I add is, let me get this close to the camera, is purple smoke pearl. And what that creates is like a lavender shad type, um, which is one of my favorite all-time baits. Uh, Nor uh, Norman had a lavender shad DD-22 that I caught so many fish on, but I just love that purple hue uh, in, in baits. I think it looks wonderful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it cool and then we'll uh, turn the camera back on and show you um, 
what the finished product is. And then we'll actually put some eyes and things on it too. Let's see, we've got some eyes up here now. Um, these are 10 millimeter eyes. We'll put those on there. Those look really, really awesome on there. Show you the whole process to doing that. Looks really good. So uh, hold on one second, let's let it cure and then we'll go from there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is it's cured enough to go ahead and pull it out. Um, we're gonna pull it out and I'm gonna take a look at it. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, look at there. <laughs> what do you think about that? How's that look? That is gorgeous. It's got a purple tint to it. You can't see it here. This is more of a smoke, but when you get it in the sunshine, it has that purple hue, uh, just like a bait fish has. Bait fish have that purple hue in them. And you get there to them and you see them in the sun and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that, that is just like a shad. But we need to put some eyes on this thing. We need to get it out and put some eyes on it. Now, one thing that I would note is I made a solid body here uh, you can do one of two ways. You can put the uh, hook slot in there with it, or you can make a purple, uh, a solid body. Um, I decided on this one to make a solid body because you can use it as a jig head. Um, you can just take a knife and slit it and use it, uh, you know, as the other way you can make a, uh, like you throw a uh, big owner beast hook with the screw lock and the weight at the bottom and use it as a belly weighted hook. Uh, but what you do is you take this flash and you just trim it with a, uh, with a pair of scissors and then you heat it. When you heat it with like this or a blowtorch or somewhere like that, and then that will smooth it out and make it real pretty. But for, so what I like to do is I put, I put them down flat like this. As you can see, the shad dots on both sides, real pretty. Um, put it down and then I'll take uh, some, some Loctite super glue. This is the only super glue that I know that just does not clog up the tip after using it a lot. And I just take it and put one drop right in the middle. And, and then I'll take one of my eyes and they're directional eyes. Uh, they have a fat part, like a, the pupil has a, uh, a skinny part. And let's see if we can see it. This pupil has a skinny part. And I put the skinny part toward the back um, like that. And then, if I can find my little dude. I always put a little bit of pressure on them. I can't find my little screwdriver. I just put a little pressure downward. Just for a second to let it hold. I usually have a little bit of screwdriver that I use. I don't know what I do with it. And there's that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna put the other eye on, trim this and uh, heat it. And then I will show you the finished product. All right, guys, we're back. Finished product, uh, here it is. It's got the beautiful eyes on it. Uh, kind of a fat part in the front, kind of slick back eyes. It's the purple pearl. Um, it's got, it's smoke, but it's got the purple hue to it. Uh, more, um, this looks more like shad than anything. I know, you know, you, you do want to have the little small shad lines in there and you can put them in there. Um, but when you see a shad and you put it in that sun, it's, it's got that, that, that hue to it, that purple hue. And, um, this is the, this is the bait that I caught the fish on in the, in the, uh, well, not the actual particular bait that I caught them on. This is actually for a guy that's bought something from me. So, uh, they look really, really good. Uh, they have a real beautiful look to them. And I'll tell you what. I'm really impressed with them and, and the way they swim they have a, like a, a real a wobble but they have a real tight action with the tail so it's kind of the best of both worlds really cool but guys i thought, hope you enjoyed that this is something we're going to be doing a lot of because i enjoy catching fish on baits that i made so let's get back to it